And welcome to today's episode on the Moving from Fear to Trust podcast series. Today I'm joined by the three O'Neill sisters who are international singers and performers from Causeway in County Kerry. They're also certified yoga teachers and are passionate about meditation and all things holistic living. So thank you so much, girls, for joining me here today. Thanks for having us. Yes. So um, I'm really interested just how like your passion for singing and performing, like how that came about and how you had the courage to follow that path. Yeah. You were the one that led the way on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so how we had the courage to follow it. Um, I suppose well, how it came about first was well, how it came about. Yeah, was Nay, you're so much better at writing. She's <laughs> even taking over from me right now. Like, <laughs> I just don't even know why she threw it over on me. Like, <laughs> I just thought that would be a good question for you. Um, yeah, I suppose because our mom sang with her two sisters. So we grew up in a house where that was something we were surrounded by. And so when we were even very young, we got, um, mom took us to, you know, uh, drama and music and performing and everything. So it was just second nature to us, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, then kind of as we got older, so when we were like early teens, Fee sort of said she wanted to create a group, uh, a singing group. And well, me and Eve didn't really have a choice. We were just told we were in it. And, <laughs> and as older sisters do. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then from there, well, we, there was one year that we practiced. There was the Art for Town competition and we practiced. Fiona had us that summer, me and Eve didn't get to do anything outside of practicing like dance moves, like till they were perfect and singing. I love us. Yeah, but we won it, and it was at the time See, it was like it was all worth it. Fifteen hard work pays yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, it was like fifteen hundred pounds, I think, which was a lot for us then, you know. And um, we actually decided that we'd put it into buying equipment and um, uh, microphones and stuff so that we could continue to gig, and mm. we haven't stopped since then. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. So let everyone know your names just in case they haven't known because we haven't said all your names yet. So just to introduce everyone to you. Yeah. Do you want to start over there? Yeah. Hello, Naomi. And Evangeline. Lovely. So yeah, it's such a lovely um, like opportunity that you all have like to be able to combine your passion and have that as your career. Like it's something that is a real gift really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a blessing. And you've, you've toured all over the world. Like, like what are the countries that you've been in so far? Well, well we've been all well, over North America. So we've toured North America a few times. And then we've been in South America in Chile. And then we've done uh, Japan. So I'm just going to all the outside of Europe countries first. And then yeah. Europe, we've been Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Switzerland um, Belgium, Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, yeah a whole bunch of those amazing yeah I guess though wait, to answer your question about the the courage to keep going probably really did come from our mom she was she has been uh fearless in in the pursuit you know she mm -hmm. boarded us all the way all the way like did everything she could to give us the opportunities to be able to pursue this passion of ours yeah that's amazing you always need somebody who's like behind you and kind of holding that space and yeah because it's like very daunting when you're in the the unknown isn't it yeah yeah I guess that's what it is isn't it mm -hmm. All the time. Yeah. yeah and which is why I think a lot of people like in life choose the safer option of like something that they know and that's familiar and that they it's can been kind of tried and it's been tried and tested so yeah you know the formula's there. Yeah. I guess there's no path for, there's a, a general path for the music industry, but it's so hard because there's so many different genres. There's so many different ways, especially since the music industry changed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anything in entertainment, really, the paths are very, you know, very overgrown and, you know, you kind of have to find your way through the, yeah. the bushes your own way. So um, yeah, it's rocky terrain. You have, to be, you have to be really strong and kind of, I suppose believe in yourself mm -hmm. and believe in yourself enough that you um then get the tools around you to carve out your own path yeah you know what I mean? and carve out your own way and 
and kind of, yeah, I suppose it is really un the unknown. It's like, you know, jumping out there and saying, yeah, we're going to make this work, even though there's absolutely no navigation points whatsoever. But we're going to find them and we're going to put them all into place and, and make mm -hmm. it work. But what I love to do, you know, like in this kind of journey of like moving from fear to trust is being able to like gather like evidence of, you know, putting yourself into the unknown and then things just appearing. So I'd love to hear from all of you if you have like an example from your experience of like when you have taken leaps of faith and how things have turned out. There's been quite, I suppose there's been yeah. quite a few of those. Yeah. Um, probably even first beginning when we took a leap of faith and moved to New York when we were in our mid-teens, so quite young, and mom moved with us because uh, we had just met, made some contacts on a St. Patrick's Day in New York previously, and we just thought, oh, this is a really good idea. Mm. Went over there, and we ended up spending three years in New York, and we had the absolute best time. We, But we went through different genres. We went over doing Celtic music, but we ended up doing um, R&B hip-hop with people with the Fuji camp and stuff, so we had just great experiences. And then we went out, took another leap of faith and went out to Los Angeles. And we ended up doing pop music out there with um, these amazing producers. And it was just every time we didn't really know, we had nothing really lined up as such when mm. we were going doing these things. But each time we, we just, we just well, it's an in following an intuition, I suppose. Taking a leap of faith is something in your belly going, hmm, I think this is, good thing to do and then just following through and then watching everything sort of fall into place you know mm -hmm. um yeah I love that and it kind of ties into the work that you're doing as yoga and you know like all the meditation practices that you do because I think like the journey that you're on is like you have to cultivate your body's wisdom and intelligence to be able to hear what's the next thing because it's not like you're not like walking into a job okay tell me what's happening today or whatever yeah. It's like it actually has to come like you're creating it as you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had a thought last night, you know, how we all have um, an inner compass. And because sometimes I know that I can hear my the voice inside loud and clear, you know, guiding me a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I notice that sometimes I haven't always listened to it. Like I can hear it and know it's telling me to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. But I will be like, no, no, I want to do this. And I, so I'll ignore it. And I find that the more you ignore it, it gets quieter and quieter. So it's kind of always like the less you show up for it, it will stop showing up for you. So it's really mm -hmm. important to stay connected to that inner compass because only then will you live like your life in alignment and yeah. things will be guided for you. I think if you ignore that, that inner voice and that inner calling, you'll be very lost. Mm -hmm. I love that because I think it just reminds me of like, it's like a garden, you have to cultivate that. You know, it's like what you're cultivating every day. And I think that connection to your inner self, like your feminine self mm -hmm. is something that has to be like, it's, it's a real discipline to actually have that connection to hear those. Like sometimes it's just like a little whisper of like, oh, I need to, do this or I need to contact this person you know it's very kind of subtle yeah you have to you have to like make a practice around like tuning into that and yeah it's um and, and for, for some reason we don't always well speaking from my own personal experience don't always follow it because sometimes it may not make sense or mm -hmm. think no I, I'm not doing that right now I know and then you you push it away yeah you know and then it'll always come kind of come back around and you'd be like, Oh, if I had listened to it then. Totally. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I think sometimes it's not like, it's not a linear path. Is it? It's like a cyclical journey. Yeah. And sometimes you have to go, sometimes you have to ignore that intuition for you to learn then what that looks like, what that feels like when you do that. Yeah. You know, so that then the next time around you can go, Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. I remember what I did previously and I'm feeling that again. And it's just like this great, like feedback system you mm -hmm. know, that we have mm -hmm. to be able to learn from. Yeah. So tell us like, what are the kind of practices that you love to do that help you like be like a high performer, like with your singing and being able to be on stage and, you know, do all those things that are pretty nerve wracking. Like what are the kind of practices that you do to support yourself? I guess, um, I, you know, I've always viewed even just myself as a singer, as the way an athlete would view themselves, you know, uh, 
professional athlete. Like it's, you know, you have to, from, from my point of view, I think, um, you know, because we, you know, you'd go on tour and you'd be on tour and you'd be on a bus and it's very draining on your body and, you know, just, and, and ex exactly living in the unknown as our job is really all the time. It's really important. I always found to be physically, um, at your peak. So mm -hmm. I guess we would be very into, you know, and we've learned, and we learned this from living, I guess, in Hollywood, which would be very, um, living in LA and living in Hollywood, everyone's very conscious of what they eat and, um, how they take care of their bodies. Mm -hmm. So I guess having that experience, we lived there for about two years. So we had, we were surrounded by it and we became very aware of, um, the foods that we put into our body, um, Nay became a holistic nutrition. Um, she studied holistic nutrition, and we got very into and previously, the importance of looking after yourself. Yeah, and the importance of looking after yourself. And previously, mm -hmm. when we were in New York, we got into um, working out and yoga yeah. and things like that. So we carried it with us. And I think it really wasn't until maybe coming to Ireland, back to Ireland, that we kind of started getting more into um, the alternatives like meditation, Reiki, um, Feng Shui, and all that kind of stuff. And just it, you know, I guess we view ourselves as a whole, you know, rather than, oh, um, everything's separate, mm -hmm. you know, so viewing ourselves as a whole and, you know, having our environment support us, having our nutrition support us, having, you know, our supporting ourselves through yoga, meditation and workout and having, you know, having a good support system, even with um, the people that we surround ourselves with um really helps when you are doing a job like this when you you know you don't know um what are you gonna what you're gonna be doing next year most of the time or mm -hmm. you know, um what lies ahead and so yeah and, and i think that's basically how any professional um athlete or any professional um that's doing their job would do their job they always kind of make sure that they have all these key support systems around them to make their um, job and their life as easy as possible, stress you know, as stressful as possible yeah. when you're yeah. doing something like this, you know, and obviously um, being a singer and being on the road and being on tour um, is a very physical, um, physical job. And mm -hmm. also like we, we would do summer, summer gigs where we were doing five or six nights a week for five, my, five months on end. So again, it's like, you have to be physically at, at your peak. To, yeah. keep, to, to sustain that and very vocal mean? cords as well to I'm sustain that so yeah yeah, yeah. It's kind of does that, does that answer your question oh yeah totally well it just right like as you're saying it, it's just like it's really like the path of self-mastery isn't it on all levels mm -hmm. it's yeah. not just like one thing it's like all the different all the different facets of yourself have to be yeah. developed and cultivated and yeah and i'm sure it's not all at the same time that you're doing everything but it's like they all start coming together do. Yeah. Do. yeah together and then you i think you also find like you get someone might be more into meditation than they are into yoga and you know mm -hmm. you, find, you find your or someone might just like breath work and every, you know there's there's it's so vast you know mm -hmm. the the so you don't have to do everything i think we've definitely <laughs> gone through phases of thinking we have to do everything and try everything and then try and fit that all into a, a day you know oh yeah your morning your morning routine is pretty long it's like <laughs> yeah. morning routine, yeah. morning routine is like a whole day in fact actually it's a week <laughs> yeah yeah so you know i think you start to you know you kind of go one one will always yeah. resonate with you more than, than the, the others yeah. yeah you can kind of once you know them you can kind of see oh, how am I feeling this morning you know what I feel like moving my body so I'm going to do yoga or mm -hmm. if you're not feeling that you might say you know I'm just going to do a bit of breathing, breathing. here or meditating yeah, you know totally. so, yeah yeah it's kind of fluidic isn't it in, in terms of yeah what it looks like it's not like a rigid structure you have to do xyz to be no. this or yeah it's very and much again, like that's tuning into your body and and what you need at yeah that time, you know yeah but it's also having a great um map like you said mastery over mm -hmm each of the different disciplines so that you can tune in and be like, Oh, that's what I want to do today. Mm. Yeah, totally. But I think all of the stuff that you're doing is, is so helpful for this present moment when the world has been thrown into the unknown, you know, yeah. because I think when you're in the unknown, your mind is obsessed with like, what's going to be the next thing. Like I can't, I want, I want to know when this will end. I want to know when this outcome will happen, but it's like everything you have to do is just constantly like bringing you back into the present moment. And that's what I feel like when, when I'm hearing like all of your practices, it's really like really cultivating the present moment and your presence within that. So, you, so it's just like just being here right now. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, well, like for me, 
well, I'm an Aries, so they're very much an airy person. So always with the thoughts going on and I get carried away and lost in la la land. And I find doing these things really help to ground me. So like mm -hmm. doing meditation, doing breathing brings me back to myself, brings me back right here to my center so that I'm not either living in the past and I'm not living in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not basing my life based on things that have happened. And then I'm not creating anxiety around the illusions of things that haven't even happened yet. It helps to bring me back right to this moment and to just step forward from here and now. That's mm -hmm. it for me. These practices are very grounding, which is something I really need, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. What about Naomi and Fiona? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I guess um, for me, what I was just thinking about there was like, you know, this was going to be the first year, I think, that we were literally going to have work, like as, as singers, professional singers, the entire year. <laughs> and we also had just done an album, which is out today. And um, so all of that now with what's gone, going on in the world, all of that now is completely thrown into we're once again in the unknown now. We don't know what's going to happen. Life likes know. to keep us busy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. So um, it, for us right now, uh, it, it is for me anyway, it's definitely been a more grounding down into all of these practices mm. and really going deep into them and, you know, come, you know, cause I think it's been the toughest thing for us to, to come, come to a spot where this year was going to be the year where we were actually going to, you know, have come to a place where we've always wanted to come to, to have continuous work as um, singers. And now that's completely been thrown in disarray. So it's, been, we've really had to dig down deep into all the practices that we've had. And again, face, the fear of the really face the fear of the unknown and mm -hmm. kind of I suppose ask the question um if this is happening for us again um what is it trying to where why is this happening and where is it trying to lead us and mm -hmm. what's the golden nugget in all of this do you yeah. know what I mean? and yeah. That's, I suppose, again, I don't know if that answers your question. Well, I find that would, it leads back to Ashling's message of moving from fear yeah. to trust. Yeah. I mean, you're just thrown into the fear mm -hmm. once, again, once again. And it's yeah. like, you could follow that fear, yeah. get lost in it, and it could mm -hmm. ruin you completely. Mm -hmm. Or come back to the center and say, and trust that this is divine and mm -hmm. everything is perfect. And yeah. in order and I have that. that trust in that yeah because yeah because yeah, that's actually i was reading something this morning and it was basically that like how it's like instead of being caught up in the dream of the world that is actually connecting to like the dream of like the perfection underlying everything the divine yeah. and that when you can trust in that and trust that like this is all happening for a greater reason and that it's just that you can't yet perceive what that reason is right now it's just like aligning yourself with that even though you can't see it it's just like tuning yourself into it the whole time. Yeah. I always love um, Steve Jobs gave a speech one time and said, it's only when he, you look back that you can connect all the dots. Yeah. You know? and, and that's the whole thing, I think, with trust is knowing that somehow these dots are connecting. And yeah. if you just keep moving forward and stay, you know, aligned that when you will look back, you know, at the end, you'll go, oh, wow. Yeah, that all connected. Because, you know, even at this, even at different stages of your life, you can look back and say, oh my God, that, that, mm -hmm. that had to happen to bring me to there, you yeah. know? But then every time it's like, but it's like humans, we have a terrible ability to like, remember that that's the case. And then, so when something scary comes along again, yes. we're like, we get all, we can get all thrown off. Yeah. And, and you know, but we have to go, oh no, remember the last time you felt this way, mm -hmm. the dots did connect eventually. So, you know, yeah. it's just coming yeah. to that. I guess we've been thrown, we, we personally have been thrown into the unknown so many times, I guess, with the <laughs> career that we've picked. Yeah. But it's kind of, again, for us, this is like another, okay, here we are again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. What's what going to do now? <laughs> yeah. But it's actually like, instead of it, like seeing it as it's happening for like against you, oh no, like we had our, everything mapped out and you know, this is going to happen this month, this is going to happen that month. 
it's kind of just like going with, okay, this is actually happening for us to actually initiate into yeah. our greater power than we than we've ever done before because all those experiences previously have been training you for yeah. this time that you're in right now. Do you know, it's just like, it's just drawing from all the, all the different like learnings and practices and approaches and just bringing that here to know that like you have it, like you have everything that you need and it's like whatever you need will be presented to you in the moment that you need it. Do you know, it's like, but it's really just like, like realizing that you are the creator, like that you're not like just a, a, like a victim to life, you know? And that's something that like we all struggle with when this thing, you know, things like this happen. It just triggers like, oh my God, you know, you're just like, this is what? <laughs> How did this happen? Yeah. Yeah. Like you feel powerless yeah. when you, ha you have the power no matter what. Yeah. You know, it's not something outside of you that dictates it. Yeah. But I think like from all of you, like in terms of like with singing, like a meditation and yoga, that's all the healing, like that, that's all the feminine healing arts. Like all of them, are, you know, they're not separate. They're all connected. Yeah. And so I feel like in a way that you're prepared for this time as well to be in this void, to actually bring, bring through this on a, like a louder way, on a more, you know, yeah, just like a fuller expression of that for, yeah, for the, for the world to hear and for everyone to enjoy. Yeah. But I suppose even in a way, because we've continued to bring the yoga classes online to our students and stuff. And in a way, I suppose if we, if we weren't able to be centered and calm, we couldn't bring that to others. But thankfully, yeah. thankfully because we are so tuned at, you know, at, at being okay in this, you know, in, in a place we don't know where anything's going to happen and, and find solace in that and be calm. It's allowing us to, you know, bring that to others and, and we're getting so many great messages on how mm -hmm. it's helping people. So, you know, you never know, you never know what your abilities are bringing to others, you know, until, so that's why you just, it's, it's all, again, it's all coming back to trust, trusting that everything that's happening in your life has a purpose and, and, is, yeah. you know, yeah. That you're, you're always guided, but I think it's like, it's yeah. For this time when people who are very new to being thrown into the unknown, I think that's why like all of you and having your platform and ex expressing what you're doing is so vitally important, even though you might not even realize how life-saving that is to other people yeah. when you're just kind of just doing it. Cause it's like, it's your practice, but it's um, yeah. Yeah. And, and not to minimize even this that's going on in the world. Like we have never been in this unknown. I think, I think <laughs> it's very unknown. It's very unknown. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. uh, you know, I can imagine for people that have lived so safely and so securely and maybe never stepped out, I can imagine this is probably just, you know, terrifying. Very scary. Yeah. yeah. And like, cause even for us, let's say who have, you know, experience of, you know, jumping into the unknown qu quite a lot. This even for us is like, Whoa. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? This is yeah. Sh sh shaky. Yeah. You know? it's, it's really, yeah. it really is like testing, I guess all the practices we have been doing and, and really testing your faith and your trust in, yeah. in a, something higher than ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of taking it from like this concept to like being fully embodied. Yeah. Yeah. I think you it know. takes something like this to It's a, it's a real test to find out where you're really at, you know, mm -hmm. you yeah. can portray and have an idea about yourself that, yeah, I am this way and blah, 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 blah. You know, the, <laughs> ego, the ego telling you like, yeah, you're amazing. It's fantastic. Blah, blah. Yeah. If something like this comes along to knock your socks off and actually make you go, oh, so I really wasn't integrating that practice. Yeah. Like yeah. I thought I was. And yeah. you know, it really, it puts you back. It, it makes it you go back. You. It makes you go back to the drawing board to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what am I? What am I um, dismissing in my life? That you know. What am I? What am I? Um, Where am I here? You're, you're going. You're. You're. <laughs> it's a spiritual, almost like a spiritual ego, rather than it being a grounded. Yeah. 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 You know. What am I like bypassing? No, bypassing. Yeah. yeah. But it's almost like the ego likes to make out that it's like, oh yeah, it has all these things. But then when you test the ego. It's like, can you really surrender? Can you really let go here and release your attachment to the yeah. outcome? Oh, really? Now I'll, I'm just going to throw you in this situation. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how you do. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's see. see how you do. Yeah, because it is so funny to see, you know, 
so many because we we know a lot of people in the spiritual community and so many people like you know across the world and it's like they're they were such you know very zen gurus and they're losing the plot really <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and it's like you know yeah because it is it's shaking everyone yeah. and I, but then but then you see everyone readjust yeah nice thing it's yeah. like everyone gets a bit like <gasps> Yeah, shock to the core. Yeah, yeah. you know, but yeah. it's, it's good, I think, because it kind of really does make us go, okay, it does make us look at ourselves so much mm-hmm. deeper, you know, and and, yeah. Yeah. and what, what are your thoughts on like this kind of like, what are, what is the opportunity within this situation, you know, like for like this kind of collective shift, like I'd love to hear any of your thoughts on that. Uh, just something that, was coming to me was that you know we really don't need as much as we think we do Mm -hmm. and I think it has taken maybe something like this uh, to realize that that's something I've realized anyway you know um, putting all like this anxiety and pressure to accumulate things Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you know, when you're at home, you can't go anywhere. You can't get any of these things. Kind of realize they're not, yeah. there's not that much in life that you need. And mm-hmm. um, in a way, there's more, I'm finding more happiness without, without yes. all of these things and being able to go to these places that I'm, previously thought I needed to always be doing or getting Mm -hmm. um just kind of having it all taken it's kind of like you know as human beings we really don't need a lot and we put unnecessary pressures on ourselves thinking that we need all these things when when we really don't at all Mm. so it's a really like return to the simplicity of of life isn't it and just like yeah. yeah as you say yeah that your happiness doesn't come from the external yeah. i know it's nice to have nice things and to be surround, surrounded by a nice environment and everything but it's like your happiness doesn't come from those things yeah you know it's the the, the real things that matter our life are are the people yeah. that you have yeah. in your life and your relationship with yourself first and mm. foremost mm-hmm. and then your relationship with the people in your life and you know just some food and water <laughs> yeah exactly yeah I, what i think i i've been loving is seeing the um and i even feel like the birds here are singing so much louder and clearer mm-hmm. and and um you know those pictures of i just saw one this morning of dolphins in it was some american city and the dolphins had come back they they normally don't because was it new york or somewhere i can't remember um because i guess the, the river is always so busy with mm-hmm. and humans and and just to see, like, we're all freaking out. But to me, it seems like the animal kingdom is having a great time. And Earth is just, you know, like, loving this. And it's like, but I, but I do think that a lot of us are seeing that. And so mm. maybe if, if I would hope that when things go back, I know they're not going to ever really go back to normal, whatever normal was. Um, but when we go back to, to living life again uh, fully, that will recognize th- those things, you know, that were, mm-hmm. that, you know, you know, cause earth was in bad shape before all this yeah. really happened. And you, you know, I'm supposed to re- reflecting on the fact that, well, you know, that might be the divine order. Keep all the humans in their houses for a while. So yeah. Store. And how much we take know? for granted. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. Like even like the fact that like, I can't go swimming to Phoenix now. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Like that is like, you know, yeah, it. yeah. So it is like all the stuff that we do take for granted that we are able to just freely move around and yeah. go here, go there, and you know, it's just like, yeah, yeah. It's a real like reset, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I just hope we don't forget it too quick because I know you can. You know. Well, I think it's going to create a lot of time for like innovation and doing things differently. And that's what I've been hearing from a lot of people, just in like just the way we work and. You know, especially people who are like in a more nine to five role. It's like, do people need to be working that many hours? Is it productive? Can can work be more flexible and integrated into your life? And, you know, I think it's just like opening the space for change to come through because people are seeing, oh, people actually can be more flexible and 
Yeah. Spend more time with kids and stuff and, and yeah. stuff get worked on. Yeah. Yeah. So let everyone know about finding your album and the release of that. So tell everyone about that release. Yeah, you, it's out today, April 3rd. And we were like wondering if it's a good time to bring it out or not. Because some people were like, oh, no, you should put it off because of the time that it's in. But you know what? I think, to be honest, now is the, be- the best time yeah. ever because yeah. like people, people need, need like, you know, music and art yeah. and all the arts, basically. Um, mm-hmm. so we were like, you know what? Even though I suppose people were saying, no, don't bring it out. But he was like, no no we're gonna listen Mm. we're gonna listen and tune in and say no this is actually what people need so we said yes we're going ahead with it we're bringing it out today so it's available today on our um on our website um and if you order it today um and previously you will get i can send over the um digital versions as well because right now obviously we're in lockdown i can't send out the physical copies Mm -hmm. But um, I can send out everyone the digital version, and then um, in the week, in the ne- next week or so, obviously I can be sending out the physical versions, and they'll be it's going to be available across iTunes and um, Spotify for downloads and stuff like that. Amazing! And what's what's the name of the album? An Irish, An Irish heart. heart. An Irish heart, and very very uh, timely, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very. Yeah, and which so- we didn't plan on. Obviously, <laughs> we just listened and we said, ah, this is what it should be called. And then, yeah, so then it worked out that. Because I think it's, it's a kind of a journey we're all going through right now, moving from our head our to our hearts, you know? Yeah, yeah, I love it. So you're, you're activating the heart space for everyone. We are, we are, yeah. Through yeah so, <laughs> so let everyone know where they can find you online as well. They can find us online um, on Facebook. Um, obviously, you just write in the O'Neill Sisters. You can find us on Instagram under the O'Neill Sisters and on Twitter, um, O'Neill, just know the O'Neill Sisters. And our website. Um, and our website. Yes. The O'Neill Sisters. Yes. And on our website, you can sign up um, for to our mailing list and you get a, some free songs. <laughs> Oh, amazing. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you so much, all, all of you. It's been such a pleasure to have you today. And I actually, it wasn't even planned that we were going to record on the day of your release. So yeah, yeah I know. True, true. We, we need to kind of get this episode out as uh, ASAP, I think. Yeah. Uh, I need to just like get editing right now. Yeah, <laughs> just Sorry, Ash. <laughs> no, no worries. It's fine. Yeah. It's all, it's, it's all like tuning in with the wave, isn't it? Yes. It's like the, wave, yeah. the wave is coming through. Yeah. So thank you so much. And thank like the, three, the, the three of you are such an amazing presence in my life and no. have been such a great support to me. So thank you so much. It's been a total honor to connect with you here and to share your wonderful message and work with the world. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.